Hello everyone, welcome to another tech tip here at 45 Drives, Brett joining you this week. Um, if you remember not too long ago, we shot a video where I uh, teased some of the new Houston modules that we have coming out. If you haven't checked that video at already, jump, go watch that there. We introduced the kind of topic. If you're new to Houston, we, we explain everything in there. So uh, go check that out and come on back here because right now we're going to dive into the, to the computer here and not into the terminal, into the Houston UI as we check out the new ZFS module. Okay, everyone, here we are. We're looking at the overview screen of Houston. We've been here many times before, but let's go somewhere we haven't, into the 45 ZFS module. So this is a complete rebuild um, from the previous module we were using. And the screen we're looking at here first is the dashboard screen. The purpose of the dashboard screen is to give you a quick at-a-glance check at the state of your pools, how full they are, when they've been scrubbed last, and well, just how many of them you have. So. Um, from this screen, you can inspect your pool, current state. You can uh, get some pool details. You can see the stats. You can see how many disks are in there. Uh, you can see the topology of them, and it spits out the disks in each VDEV. Tells you the health of each drive. You can actually get a quick view of any snapshots on this pool if you need to see them that way. And uh, if you need to change any settings, you can do that here. Um, if you want to add a virtual device, you can do that from here. You can resilver the pool, scrub pool. You can do all that deeper in the pool screen, but a quick, uh, quick look at it here. Uh, this is the dashboard screen of the ZFS module. Okay, now we're on the second tab of the ZFS module, the detailed look at the pool. So like we saw on the dashboard, I have two pools in here. If I expand one of them, it lists out the, uh, the VDEV and all the disks in the VDEV. Um, here, you can do things like offline a disk or replace a disk. Um, on the top level, you can do the same things that you could do in the dashboard. You could scrub your pool, you can resilver your pool, you can read the details about your pool. Um, you can add a virtual device if you need to add more, you can export or you can destroy your pool. How many times am I going to say pool in this video? Quite a few times. Um, that was just a little humor to keep everyone excited. Um, if I expand this one, I have another pool with much more VDEVs in it, and you can see the breakdown like so. Um, closing this off, let's take a look through the Create the Storage Pool wizard. So um, I have four unused disks in the system, so let's, be, let's create a Z pool with a couple mirrors, mirrored VDEVs. So we'll go Test Pool, because whenever you're making a test, you just got to stick test in somewhere. Uh, you can choose your... Um, your VDEV type. In my case here, I want to use a mirror. Um, device alias is your disk identifier. For those unaware with the 45 drive systems, these device naming, the 2829, these match the exact silk screen on the slot of where the drive's plugged in. So it's easy to find your drive physically. Otherwise, you could use the block device, but where is SDS? No one really knows. So that's why we put device aliasing. So what we're going to do here is collect, collect, select two disks to be in my first mirrored VDEV. But I want two VDEVs, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another one. And click, and click again. What's really cool here, let me unclick this, is to prevent any accidental clicks or quickness, um, you notice that for my second VDEV type, I can't choose a RAID Z1 or a disk or whatever. We limit you to either the same type of the VDEV as your first one is, or one of these special VDEVs, the cache, uh, separate intent log, special, spare, dedupe. Uh, the details of each of those a little out of scope of the video. The point here is that we're trying to make this easy and uh, no misclicks will end up with a pool that you don't really want. So with that, let's hit next. Pool settings. So uh, if you need to change your sector size, you can do anything like that. Turn on compression. If you have any advanced settings, you can turn those on. Uh, next, you want to create a ZFS file system on top of it. Well, that's a good idea. Um, one thing that we have learned in our, our administering of Z pools over all the years is some people get so excited they create a pool and start putting all their data on there. But what you actually want to do is create a data set on your pool because then it keeps all your files organized and it's easier to send them places. So we simplified that process for you by giving you the ability to do just that. So let me call this a test data set because is it really a test if you don't put test in the name? 
and uh, we'll have that inherit all its data from there. We get a little summary page of everything that we're going to do. So there's our devices in there. And let's hit finish. Boop. Pools created. All done. So let's hit back. Or cancel, sorry, because we're all done. Let's minimize everything. And there's our test pool up and ready to run. Okay, so this now is the third tab in the ZFS module, the actual file system tab. So again, dashboard overview, pools, your actual storage devices and your redundancy and file systems is all the fun stuff of how we organize the data on our Z pool. Um, so a quick look at the tree structure here. I have all the file systems present on my system here. You can tell by the indentation of which file system belongs to which Z pool. So uh, my first pool here that I've been doing some testing with, rep test, has no child data sets or file systems. Tank has a bunch, and test pool, the pool we had made in the previous screen, is here with its data set, test data set. So quick look here, you can expand, no snapshots found. If you expand on the file system, you can see any snapshots created on them. Um, from there, you can administer those snapshots, clone them, rename them, whatever but each line has its file systems there. Um, if you go to the side button here, we can configure the file system. If you want to change any of the settings, you can do that there. If you want to rename the file system, unmount un the file system, create a snapshot, you can do all of that there. Okay, the other, other awesome feature of ZFS is sending of file system places. Um, what I mean by that is you can use CFS send and receive to very easily and efficiently move data between ZFS servers or pools. Um, how you do that is you send a snapshot. So if we wanted to send a snapshot of the new pool we made, we'd want to create a snapshot. Uh, I won't do a custom name, I'll just use the default time settings. Hit create. If I expand here, there it's now sitting here, I can now send that snapshot to a re receiving host. So I could send it to my other server. And, um, oh, sorry, I did that wrong. That'd be host. This would be uh, my test, my backup data set over here. Um, my user's root user, my receiving port, and then mBuffer, which smooths the whole thing out. And then I'd hit send, whoosh, and it would fire the whole thing over. You need passwordless SSH to set this up, so we've got a nice little button here that'll tell you if it's set up. I put false info in here, so let's hit the button. So let's try root at my other system. Test, and it goes, no, I don't know who you're talking about. Um, or you could pick, here's, for example, my own system here. And it would say, yeah, the connection works. So you can test to see if your, if your ZFS send can actually communicate with each other. Anyway, great feature there. We've limited it to send on snapshots because you really shouldn't send a file system. You should send a snapshot of the file system. The file system's never finished. What if it adds data while you're sending it? So that was our decision there. So that was an overview of the new 45 Drive ZFS module. Hope you enjoyed that. If you have any questions, comments, anything at all, drop them in the link below or any of the social medias that we have, Instagram, Twitter, X, whatever you call that these days. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, stay tuned as we unveil more of these in the future.